Good morning again to everyone and welcome to the Mentoring Hour. Uh, thank you for joining the Mentoring Hour this morning. Uh, can one of you please lead us in prayer, please? Anyone? So, Asha, thank you so much. Dear God, thank you so much, guys, for that to start your day, Lord, that whatever questions are done from this year, uh, counsel us and lead us, God, that everything is clear, I know that your spirit lead us as we are those who are starting and train our Lord, that everything that she does is in your hand, Lord. Thank you so much for today, that everyone will be blessed and then that you are with good, God, and never gives up on each other. Thank you for your kindness and your mercy that you us every day. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Asha. And uh, this mentoring hour, uh, you know, we'd like to uh, open up this time for uh, any of you to ask questions regarding Christian life, uh, what you've been, you know, studying from the Bible or what you've been learning from the courses about uh, questions on ministry, anything pertaining to Christian life ministry, uh, to the courses that you're studying, please feel free to unmute your mics and ask your questions. Uh, you could also even post uh, the question on in the chat section and we'll do our best, the faculties are here, uh, we'll do our best to answer your questions. So you could begin, you can unmute your mics and uh, ask the questions or you can even post them on the in the chat section. Anyone would like to begin? Do you have any questions? Yes, Surya. Yeah, ma'am. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. Uh, ma'am, one question from my side. Um, actually, ma'am, uh, from so many days, I'm I'm asking to myself that uh, I'm having so much of faith, like. Uh, maximum up to uh, like abraham uh but i'm not having uh, that much of prayer life so so my question is so whether i have to keep focus on my faith or on my prayer so, yeah, so, uh, so from my side i am always keep keeping focus on faith only why right? because uh, uh, I'm having so much of faith in God that God will do anything based on my faith. So I'm thinking in that way. Mm, so could you suggest that whether I have to keep focus on my faith or on on prayer, on so much of prayer for life? Okay. Good question. Thank you for your question, Surya. So Surya's question is, you know, uh, he has, uh, he feels that he has, or he senses that he has faith, um, like Abraham's faith, uh, and he's, he knows that whatever he asks uh, God, God will answer him. And his uh, his query is, you know, should he focus just on his faith aspect of his life, faith walk with God, or also, you know, uh, grow in his, uh, you know, spiritual intimacy with God, uh, prayer life. Uh, so like, would any of our uh, faculty like to answer this question? Uh, someone who the faculty who's teaching on prayer and intercession like to answer yes. this uh, yes Pastor Selena that would be me and thank you Surya for that uh, question um, so what I would like to uh, say is that prayer and faith are interconnected it's wonderful that you have um, a lot of faith in god and that you trust that god is able you know to fulfill his promise in your life uh, just the way you know abraham believed in god um, but here's the thing uh, we we see that uh, you know jesus 
encouraged one to have uh, a strong prayer life to continually um, keep their faith strong. So a uh, reason why I'm saying this is in Matthew chapter 17, there is an incident where um, uh, the, the son uh, of, of a person, he's taken to the disciples. He is... Um, uh, tormented by uh, you know demons and he's taken to the disciples but the disciples are not able to cast out the demon so at that point this is in Matthew chapter 17 and verse 17 where Jesus he rebukes the disciples and he says oh faithless and perverse generation how long shall I be with you now, how long shall I bear with you? No, bring him here to me. So no, he rebukes the disciples. They couldn't cast out the demon. He says, one of the reasons is faithless generation. Okay, so um, what is the solution? So then after that, he casts out the demon. And then, you know, he um, the disciples come back and ask him, uh, Lord, you know, why couldn't we cast out the demon? So then he says something like, um, you know, he talks about faith. Okay. Because of your unbelief, he answers their question. Uh, and he uh, adds to that and he says, um, this kind shall not go out except by prayer and fasting. So you see there, for them to have been able to cast out the demon, they needed faith. And for that faith, Jesus is saying, without prayer and fasting. So there's a connection to keep our faith between prayer and faith so for us to keep our faith strong uh one needs to fast for one to uh you know deal with unbelief in their lives they need to um pray and fast so there is a connection so uh great that we have good faith but to maintain that faith and strengthen that faith in order to walk in um, you know the supernatural and the things of god uh, we need to pray uh, surya so it's when we pray that uh, you know, our faith will be maintained and also grow. I, I hope I shared that clearly. Uh, does that make sense, uh, Surya? Does it help? Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Pastor Nancy. Uh, would anyone, any of the other faculty like to uh, share your insights on Surya's yeah, question? Um, um... Yeah, thanks, Selena. I just want to share a, 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 just a couple of scriptures, uh, actually three three of them. One is from Jude, um, Jude chapter 1, verse 20. You know? It says, but you, beloved, building yourself up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God, you know, looking unto the mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ. So um, like Pastor Nancy said, there is a connection between faith and prayer. And here we say uh, praying in the Holy Spirit, which is praying in tongues, which is um, which is building yourself. I mean, building us uh, uh, in faith, right? So, so uh, here's the instruction uh, from in this episode that you pray in the Holy Spirit, and you're going to build yourself up in the Holy uh, in, in a faith. Then we also see in Romans ten seventeen. Of course, it's about saving faith. So it says, so faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So here uh, we see uh, the other uh, you know thing of uh, the word of God nourishing us, and the word of God uh, building our faith. Right. And then the third thing that we see is one Corinthians twelve, where um, where we have the gift of faith, which is another aspect of faith, um, where uh, 1 Corinthians 12 talks about how for, by the Holy Spirit uh, we have the gift of faith. 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 9, I think, yeah, to another faith by the uh, same Spirit. So the gift of faith is also um, another thing which we receive from the Spirit, uh, from the Holy Spirit. And we see, uh, you know, uh, 1 Corinthians 14 talk about uh, pursue love and desire spiritual gifts. So this is something, uh, again, you know, uh, it is an expectation. It is in prayer where we uh, pursue love and desire spiritual gifts. So all these um, contribute to faith. All these help us um, uh, in our faith walk and develop our faith. So I just wanted to share these scriptures. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Nancy and Pastor Jay Kumar. Uh, uh, did that help uh, Surya answer your question? Yes, ma'am, that, that helped me. No. Okay. Thank you so much for your question. Uh, anyone else has any questions? Yes, Krisha? 
Good morning, all the respected pastors. Um, I have one question, and uh, it's related to a different religion, as my parents are unbelievers. And so, uh, in this year, one or two, two, three times, it has happened that they kept a puja in ma in the house, and apparently we had many guests, and I couldn't be rebellious about it, and I had to sit in that puja. But in my heart, I was like praying to God that God, please don't get upset with me. This is not what I'm. I want to do, but uh, to just keep uh, like respect my parents, I have to sit here. I have no nothing to do with it. So, but I feel very guilty later on that why am I even sitting there? Because uh, as we read in the Old Testament, God only get like mostly he gets upset when you know they used to pray to some other gods. But in my heart, I'm like never praying to those gods. So, what should I do about this situation? Thank you for your uh, question, Krisha. And uh, can any of our faculty help in answering uh, Krisha's question or her struggle in life? Pastor Paul, like to add something for, on this? Pastor Paul is not there. No, he is. Uh, he's not there. Okay. Anyone like to help uh, Krisha? I can only give my opinion on this, uh, and then of course, you know, if anyone else has uh, something to add, that would be really helpful. Uh, but. Uh, it's just that, you know, we who live in cultures where um, um, idol worship is like a part of uh, the everyday life for many, many people, uh, we find ourselves in homes, in situations where uh, we are not followers of these uh, other idols anymore. Uh, but then we have family members who are still following them. And also we may be, you know, in uh, setups, cultural setups where uh, we work in those places where such things are being done. And um, uh, so uh, in, in such situations, um, I think you know, more than anything, the Lord uh, very clearly is looking at the heart of each person. And when he sees his follower uh, holding on to their right heart attitude, uh, I think the Lord does um, honor that. Uh, he does take note of that uh, because I'm just reminded of that uh, Old Testament story in 2 Kings chapter 5 uh, where you have Naaman who experiences a great miracle. His leprosy is completely healed and he realizes that this uh, Yahweh is the true God, the living God. And so he decides that when he goes back to his kingdom and he continues working over there under his uh, you know, heathen king, uh, he decides that he's going to take mud from the land of Israel and build an altar to Yahweh in his land and make uh, you know, sacrifices in future only to the living God Yahweh, to nobody else. So very clearly he makes a commitment to become a follower of the Lord. And over there he says uh, in uh, Second Kings uh, chapter 5 and in uh, verse 17. So in 17 he makes his commitment and says, I will only make sacrifices uh, to the Lord God uh, exactly as he instructed. He said I should take uh, uh, mud and uh, make an altar to him. So I will use the Israelite mud and make a commitment to make sacrifices to the Lord. And in the next verse he says, you see my job, my duty is, is such that uh, I, I would have to accompany my old king uh, into the temple because he cannot walk on his own. And you can't just have some helper coming and doing that because the king is supposed to be a very big uh, person. And so this minister, this very, very important commander, he would have to take the king uh, into the uh, temple. So he would literally be going into the temple with the king. And he says, uh, when, the, when that king bows down, I have no choice because I'll be the one holding him. And so I will also have to bend down. 
uh, in front of that idol and he says over there uh, but may the lord pardon your servant uh, on one account uh, because he says later on in that same verse when i do bow down in the house of rimmon may the lord pardon your servant on this one count you know so and then um, uh, the prophet to whom he is posing this question the prophet says go in peace so uh, uh, Naaman circumstances were such that he really didn't have much of a choice, um, you know. Um, so you probably, because of your home situation, are forced to sit over there. Uh, but then uh, the Lord will honor you for your attitude, you know, in your heart where you are holding on to Him. Uh, a chance may come for you one day when you know you uh, will have greater freedom and you can, you know, stand up and say no. I think uh, Deepika's uh, connectivity is a little a big part of the uh, puja at all. Uh, I'll help you. Yeah, yeah. That that's a that's all I had to say. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Deepika. We just lost you uh, uh, in the last bit. Can you please uh, repeat what you said in the last bit, please? Because we couldn't hear you. Your uh, connection was uh, a little bad or low. I think. Oh, okay. Uh, I know. I, I I was just saying that. Um, um, the when we get an opportunity to move away, we should, you know, but then right now she may not be able to move away from her home uh, because uh, of circumstances. So as long as she's in that home, she would have to adjust a bit. But yeah, her heart would need to stay very true to the Lord. Um, yeah. Thank you very much, Pastor Deepika. Uh, any, other, uh, any of the other pastors would like to uh, help Trisha? in her situation, what she's going through. Yes, Pastor Nancy. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, Krisha, for sharing, uh, you know, about this incident and Pastor Deepika for uh, sharing your thoughts. I just wanted to add, uh, so as Pastor Deepika said, when our conscience is clear uh, and our circumstances are such, you know, God definitely understands. So, you know, don't uh, uh, condemn yourself over uh, what, what has happened. Uh, but another passage in first corinthians chapter 8 uh, it talks about how you know uh, believers when they have knowledge and this is in a different context it's in the context of uh, eating food offered to idols so there paul says that when uh, you know it, the the food offered to idols it cannot defile us Okay. Uh, but then when we know that others are in uh, knowledge of the fact that we are believers, for the sake of the weaker brother, don't eat the food offered to idols. So uh, basically, it's a question of testimony. So um, uh, with this passage in mind, so you can read the entire passage, actually, 1 Corinthians chapter 8. Uh, what I want to say is whenever possible, Krisha, in these circumstances, um, uh, if we can stand out if we can make a choice uh you know to say oh, okay i will not be able to participate in this or something like that i think that would be a good thing to do that would be a good thing to do but i by under but i understand that you know uh currently you're not able to do that that's fine but uh hopefully in the future as pastor deepika said when circumstances are a little different and you can take your stand uh it'll always be good to to move away uh, from uh, you know these practices uh because uh people know you as a believer so it's an opportunity to to have a testimony before people when we say no you know to uh, participating in a program or maybe eating the food which is uh, offered to uh, other gods and things like that so yeah i hope that helps krisha thank you thank you pastor nancy uh, did that help uh, answering your uh, question or you and situation that you that you will face in the future as well, Krisha? Yes, yes, Pastor. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Deepika and Pastor Nancy. Uh, anyone else has any questions? Please feel free to ask your questions. You can unmute your mics or even post it on the 
chat section. So Asha Rani has a question. In times of persecution, what are the ways can we keep our Christian faith in Christ Jesus safe and also say, stay strong? Okay, so her question is, in times of persecution, what are the ways uh, can we keep our Christian faith in Jesus Christ safe and also stay strong? Anyone like to answer this question? And one second, repeat, ma'am. Uh, the question is, in times of persecution, what are the ways that we can keep our Christian faith in Jesus Christ safe and also stay strong? So I think uh, one, uh, a few things that we could do is, uh, you know, if you uh, have the opportunity to read God's word, you can read God's word because God's word is life. Uh, it strengthens, it, it encourages us, it gives us the hope, uh, it gives us the peace that we need. But if we are in a situation where we can't can't even read uh, God's word, then maybe, you know, we can just uh, pray in the spirit, uh, you know, quietly, because no one can take that away from us. We can, um, uh, you know, speak to God, we can pray, we can pray in the spirit um, so that our inner man, our inner spirit man is edified. Um, we get our strength from the Lord. Uh, we get encouragement, we get hope, we can experience this tangible um, uh, presence. Um, and also we know at these times, you know, God can just uh, remind us of scripture passages uh, that can just come into our uh, spirit man in our minds uh, that can really uplift us, that can really uh, strengthen us and uh, uh, build us up. So these are some of the things that uh, we can do. And we also have the assurance, uh, Jesus said, you know, when you're, uh, when you're facing persecution, uh, do not fear because the Holy Spirit uh, will help you to answer, to tell, will give you the right words, will show you what you need to do, what you need to say and how you need to uh, answer. So I think uh, these are a few things that we could do. And that's why it's so important for us to uh, read God's word, memorize God's word, because there will be a time when we won't have the Bibles in our hand. And, uh, you know, at that time, all that we have read scripture will just uh, come back to us uh, in our situations, will speak to us, will edify us, strengthen us. Um, and uh, build us up. And the other thing we can also do is, uh, you know, uh, when we are going through persecution, there's a lot of bitterness and anger and hatred against those who are uh, persecuting us. So, uh, you know, when, when those emotions rise up, there's fear, uh, there's anxiety, uh, those emotions rise up, then, you know, we we don't have the peace in our heart and our mind to hear from God, what he's telling us, how he's encouraging us. Uh, I know it's a difficult stand and a position to take, but, you know, just pray for those who are persecuting uh, um, you or, the, you know, those who are persecuting uh, believers. Just pray that God will open their eyes. Uh, pray that, uh, you know, whatever you say will just uh, also minister to them, speak to them. Um, and uh, strengthen them because, you know, uh, the joy of the Lord will be our strength. And we see uh, Paul, you know, when they were beaten up and uh, persecuted and beaten up and uh, thrown into prison, you know, what did they do? Uh, what did Paul do? He was, uh, you know, uh, uh, praising God, singing hymns and praising God. And uh, it's, you know, uh, in a difficult situation like that, you know, he was... Uh, uh, was willing to just praise God, just worship him. And uh, we know what happened later on. So we see that even though Paul went through persecutions, uh, what strengthened him was his faith in God, his uh, the assurance that God is with him, the calling that he had uh, to just pursue that calling, uh, to just walk in that uh, faith walk um, and, uh, you know, uh, just to uh, know that God is there with him. Okay. Anyone else likes to add uh, to Asha Rani's question? Uh, 
Um, I just want to read uh, the scripture, uh, which is in uh, Acts chapter 4. And, um, you know, uh, Acts chapter 4, um, which is actually a prayer uh, by the church, Acts chapter 4, 29, I guess, um, 29 onwards. So here we see that uh, Peter and John, they've been arrested and they've been, uh, they've been released, but they've been uh, threatened. Uh, not to preach um, Jesus. So uh, when they got together and then they prayed with all the disciples, so this is what they prayed. They prayed, um, I'm just reading from verse 29, Acts chapter 4. Now, Lord, look on their threats and grant to your servants that with all boldness they may speak your word by stretching out your hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your Lord, servant Jesus, through your holy servant Jesus. And when they had uh, prayed, the place where they uh, were assembled together were shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and they spoke the word of God with boldness. You know, so uh, such a very uh, radical, bold move. They they kind of dug in deep, you know, when they were facing these threats. Uh, they they uh, dug in deep in, in God. And, um, and, and as a result of uh, just praying for the persecutors, praying for the church, and this is what they prayed saying, Lord, you stretch out your hand to heal and signs and wonders may be done through your name. Now, let the supernatural be made manifest. And it says that the place that they had prayed was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and they preached the word of God with boldness. So God really answered that. You know, So I think that's that's one thing to do, to, to pray for the church, which is being persecuted, people who are being persecuted for ourselves, and to pray for the persecutors also, uh, to intercede for them. And uh, and I'm sure that you know um, they did that. The church did that for Saul, um, and uh, we we see the change, life, um, the transformation uh, by the sovereign move of God. You know, uh, and Paul, um, and became one of the greatest uh, apostles, uh, planting churches and so on. So we can pray for our persecutors, and it's definitely it's it's not an easy thing. Uh, and uh, like what Pastor Selena mentioned in Acts chapter 16. You know, one is prayer, the other one is the worship. You know, worship really um, uh, changes us, transforms us, and uh, changes our focus. You know, we are focusing on God, who is our deliverer, who is our healer, who is our, you know, you know uh, uh, the one who is a bondage breaker. So, and we see in Acts chapter 16, verse 25, but at midnight, Paul and Silas were singing, praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them, and we saw the breakthrough intended by the Lord. So um, just these two things came to my mind. Um, I'm just sharing that. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Jay Kumar. Um, anyone else would like to add to Asharani's uh, question? Asharani, uh, uh, were those uh, thoughts helpful? Yes, I was actually scared of that. Like, I think this all the Christian history missionaries, they're martyred for Christ. I was a little scared of death, you know, like this. And this, yeah, so what you, you and Pastor Jake said, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Asha. So the the uh, the incident I was talking about, Pilate, Paul and Silas in prison, so Max chapter 16, verses uh, 16 to 40. Thank you also for Pastor Jai Kumar for uh, sharing the reference. Okay. Anyone else has any questions? The questions can, yes, Krisha. Actually, it's a more of a situation, ma'am. Uh, mm -hmm. So last year I got saved uh, in a church. And I'm a little discouraged, actually, because that church has dissolved. I'm very much discouraged, actually. So uh, the reason why I'm discouraged is because the pastor who was taking this church uh, apparently was a little hypocrite, which I got to know now recently. Uh, he and his wife were like, were my, they became my like mentors when I uh, started going there because I got saved there and everything was great. And I, all these months I was going there and now just this month, past month, uh, I got to know that they will not be taking church anymore. And uh, I got to know that his wife and pastor, they both have separated and he had an affair 
with one of the one of the uh, females who was coming to the church and uh, i'm actually in shock because uh, bible says something else about pastors and teachers and um, i am not able to like you know uh, they handle the situation very well so i just really need your guidance how to uh, go about the situation ma'am pastors yeah uh thank you for sharing uh, krisha and uh, uh, can any of our faculty help krisha what she is going through presently anyone pastor deepika like to share something well yeah it's a very painful shock when we you know have um, someone has been a blessing to us and they have uh, mentored us they have guided us and uh, suddenly we find out something about them and we realize that they were presenting one side to us and then there is another hidden side and it hurts it feels like such a betrayal it feels so painful uh, so i can you know in a way to a small extent relate to what you must be feeling uh, you especially must be feeling it to a much greater extent because they were like a family to you uh, so but i mean it just shows goes to show right that everyone it doesn't matter what kind of a calling god has placed on their lives we are all equally uh, responsible to him uh, on how we choose to walk with him on a daily basis because Sorry, Pastor Deepika, we can't hear you. Jesus said, "You got to take up your cross every day. Follow Him anymore." And um, uh, so they become very slack in their attitude. And one lesson that we can learn from this is that we need to be very much careful on our guard. Never grow overconfident. Always stay connected to Him in prayer, in studying the Word, so that the Holy Spirit can get a chance to, you know, go on uh, correcting us and, um, you know. Um, reminding us of his scriptures and his standards so that we can hold on to the lord and not make this uh, mistake that we see so yes i mean it has happened to me as well i've seen some leaders uh, fall and it it hurts more than anything else because you see you trusted them and you opened up to them and now you see that they had another side to them altogether and that hurts it really hurts at a personal level but it also helps us to learn we it it's like a warning so that we don't fall the way they fell and um, um uh, so we just realize that all are human and all are at risk if they do not hold on to the spirit and walk in step uh deepika we lost you again on a day to day basis that are so vital through this uh, sorry dikita sorry for interrupting uh, we lost yes. you where you said you know we have to walk in the spirit we lost yes you. we yeah. need to stay in step with the spirit on a day to day basis like it says in galatians 5 because otherwise we would fall away so his leading on a day to day basis is vital and uh, so um, now even as you are being led by his spirit on a day to day basis he knew about this he knew this painful thing would happen in your life so he has already made plans you know there is another place that he will lead you to where you will find fellowship once again uh, where uh, you know you can have that uh, um, uh mentoring and guidance and people who will be there to support you in prayer you god will help you uh, lead you to other places uh, other groups you know where you can uh, have your fellowship and you can continue to grow uh, so uh, you know you can just keep that in prayer that the lord would bring you in in touch with people you know who can uh, you know then that way you would get to know about in maybe another church or another fellowship group uh, where you can join uh, so uh, ask the lord say lord this has happened it's something painful uh, but lord now now you lead me to a new place where i can find good fellowship and um, when you go there you you'll probably have that at the back of your mind now how am i to trust people you know because uh, you you have been betrayed uh, how do i trust this what you would be asking uh,
Deepika, we lost you again. Oh, the Lord is someone you know who takes care. Sorry, sorry, Deepika. Uh, sorry. You mean uh, the volume went or something? Yes, we lost you again. Uh, I'm when you talk very about... sorry. This connection must be bad. I'm very, very sorry. <laughs> no. <laughs> no worries. We lost you where you said uh, about betrayal. You know, you will be, you feel betrayed again when you go to uh, the, the new. Yeah. Church. So the okay. question which comes up is now: How am I to trust this new group of people? Uh, you know, that's just a thought that comes along. Uh, so. Uh, what we can do in a situation like that is, you know, Lord, I trust you. You're the one, you know, you're the person who will never change. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. So, Lord, I believe that you will lead me to people who will be there for me, you know, uh, uh, true people who walk in the faith, true people who can uh, bless me and help me, true people with whom I can, you know, enjoy fellowship. So just look to him, trust him. Uh, and uh, he will help you to find a group of people uh, who can really give you the support and fellowship that you need. And um, just because you know we go through bad experiences, it does not mean that we will go through them again and again and again. No. Some things God allows as a learning experience. Some things God allows us because he knows that you know, in him, through him, we will have the strength to overcome that terrible thing. So God allowed it. Uh, now he will strengthen you. He will help you to overcome that. You will come out of this stronger. You will come off, come out of this wiser. Uh, but do not think that this is going to happen again and again. No, uh, because the Lord wants you to have fellowship. He wants you to enjoy the church. He wants you to have people who can speak into your life. So he will take you to good people. Trust him. Look to him, and he will guide you uh, to who you know. Uh, into which church you can go to and which fellowship you can uh, be part of. So he will lead you out of this. He will lead you into a new place where you where you will be healed. You will be able to you know trust once again, and uh, you will be able to uh, have a wonderful uh, fellowship with people and walk with the Lord. So you do have a good future ahead. You do not have to have to worry that you will always be betrayed. Uh, yeah, you do not have to have that worry at all. You know, you don't need to walk in fear at all. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Pastor Deepika. Uh, any of the other faculty would like to uh, share your thoughts, your insights on this? Anyone? Uh, yes, uh, Pastor Serena, just uh, a, a small thing. Actually, Pastor Deepika has covered everything. Uh, so as she was saying, yeah, trust in the Lord. I just want to encourage you, uh, Krisha, trust in the Lord. Um, See, we we know that uh, in the body of Christ, uh, we we are called to have you know um, good relationships with people because this body is about people and about you know walking together, uh, growing together in the Lord. So that is a given. But over and above that, you know, I I just want to emphasize, and I'm posting this uh, passage for you, uh, verse in. Uh, the chat section hebrews chapter 12 verse 2 so i was reminded of it basically uh, verse 2 it says looking unto jesus the author and the finisher of our faith so uh, ultimately okay ultimately our faith and our trust has to be on the lord jesus so our faith is based on him uh, so yes we we need good relationships we need good mentors but if ever something happens and we notice that uh, you know somebody's uh, uh, fallen away that should not you know we should uh, in other words we should not let that affect our faith because our focus is the lord jesus and our faith is based on him and he is unshakable he is perfect so uh, just that one thought krisha to really fix uh, our eyes on jesus he is the author and the finisher of our faith Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Nancy. Uh, just want to uh, encourage you, Krisha, with saying that, uh, you know, people are not perfect. Uh, there's, we all are imperfect. We all fall. Uh, so, you know, it's an important thing that we uh, understand this and also know that, uh, you know, uh, people are not always going to be there for us or even help us. 
so like Pastor Nancy said, you know, we need to fix our eyes on, uh, you know, uh, Jesus, the author, perfected, the finisher of our uh, race. And that is what even Jesus did when he lived here on this earth. You know, he saw the crowds uh, at one point of time, uh, you know, uh, saying Hosanna uh, and, you know, waving palm branches, casting, putting their cloaks down. And Jesus entered Jerusalem in a triumphal entry. He was there with his disciples and uh, you know, they promised to be with him till the very end. But, uh, you know, they all uh, deserted him when uh, when he was, uh, you know, arrested. And we also see the same crowd that, you know, uh, said Hosanna and praised him. And, uh, you know, uh, the same crowd uh, said crucify him and released uh, to us Barabbas. Uh, so, you know, uh, God also knows what is in the heart of man. So, but we see that Jesus uh, focused his eyes were never on the people, even though he came to save us. Uh, his uh, he he did not look for affirmation. He didn't look for honor. He didn't look for respect from them. He didn't look uh, you know uh, to them and what where uh, you know what they were thinking about him. But he always looked up to his father. He always drew strength from his father, and that's why it says in many places in the gospel where it says that Jesus withdrew uh, by himself to a quiet place uh, because he spent time with the father. So it's uh, you know it's a good learning for us. Uh, even as you know, you just stepped into your faith walk with God, uh, not to look at people, but to look at God always. Um, you know, uh, and uh, you know, His word should be the one that is actually mentoring you, guiding you, leading you, strengthening you. Um, your uh, your uh, time with Him that you spend in prayer is a time when you know He strengthens uh, you, and I think that's a it's a good lesson to learn early in life, though it's painful and difficult. But that's something that will sustain you for the rest of your life, because when you go to difficult situations, uh, trust me, you know, instead of falling back on people, you can just go straight to God. You can just trust Him. You can just fall on Him. He becomes your father, your friend, uh, your companion, your counselor, your guide and you will see that you actually don't need anyone else because he's more than sufficient he's more than uh, enough for you and that's what you know jesus experienced himself and uh, so it's a good and a difficult learning but yeah, i know the pain and struggle that comes along with it um, but you know it's uh, good to learn this uh, in your early walk with god and also pray for your pastor and for uh, you know uh, his wife and um, pray for the church uh, you know just pray for god's peace for people to be strengthened that the people in the church will not walk away and um, you know god has a fellowship um, that you can be built and strengthened and even as you step into that fellowship you're not looking for uh, care and for nurturing but you're coming to a place because you're already receiving care and being nurtured spiritually uh, uh, by god you're in a place where you are going to be you know nurturing others strengthening others in their faith and building them up and i think this is what maybe god is uh, leading you or you know guiding you to do okay uh, so did that help trisha it helped a lot. Thank you, all the pastors. Thank you so much. Uh, we'll, we'll be praying for you, Krisha, uh, and for your church as well, and the pastor and his wife. Uh, thank you, Pastor Deepika and uh, Pastor Nancy, for your thoughts. Uh, Siddhikenu has a question, it says, uh, you know, regarding the decline of Christianity, like if you see in the statistics in the USA in 2015, it was 96% of Christianity. Now in 2021, it's um, 47%. And in India, for, for a long time, it's only around 0.03%. According to my research done, people in the Western countries, which were considered as Christian nations, they are following Hindutva and Islam. Uh, I wanted to, I want, to something I want to know if there is something we are lacking behind or something because there is there in a because in a recent interview a well-known Hollywood actor Robert Downey Jr. said I have start I have started flowing in Hinduism because I found a way of spirituality. What should be done in these cases when our Christianity is declining? So Rosalind says, uh, Christ Christianity is not declining, brother. Don't go with the stats. God is at work. The Holy Spirit is moving like never before. And watch few videos on YouTube where Muslim brothers and sisters have received Jesus Christ as their personal 
uh, savior. Yes, uh, so like any of our uh, faculty like to add your thoughts on this? Anyone? I think it's about once in 10 years that here in India, they take the census and that's when the statistics get, uh, you know, put up for the different religious uh, segments. And um, yes, the percentage has been sitting there at a low uh, thing. And in a way, it's good because uh, it kind of hides the reality because a lot of people don't formally, you know, go uh, out there and, uh, you know, re-register themselves as belonging to the Christian faith. But uh, because I personally know a whole bunch of people who are now strong believers in the Lord, but out there in the official, uh, you know, uh, uh, forms, um, they have not changed it because it will just simply draw unnecessary attention to them. So the so do not ever think that here in India, you know, the uh, kingdom of God is not flourishing. It is. It's a lot of people are coming to the Lord. A lot of lives are being changed. And it's good that the statics uh, are showing something else. It kind of, you know, gives us a little bit of um, uh, leeway. So uh, it, it's fine uh, because, you know, um, there's a great power in this gospel. And uh, Jesus talks about the kingdom of God in um, Matthew chapter 13. Uh, verse 31, you know, he talks about where he compares the kingdom of heaven to a mustard seed. And he says over there, uh, it's such it's the smallest of all seeds. But when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree so that the, uh, the birds of the air come and nest in its branches. So there are a lot of uh, people in India who are nesting in the uh, you know branches of the kingdom of God and they belong to different faiths and it's very beautiful to see the work that the Lord is doing. Yes, it is true. Many have still been unreached here in India, uh, but then, you know, there are many churches praying for this, working towards it so, so that even these people groups can be reached. So the Lord really knows what he's doing. He, his uh, work is going on and his army is like all equipped and ready and there's a lot happening. It just doesn't show up in the official statistics, which is really good uh, because it allows us to do our work unhindered. Um, so I think it's the same probably in other countries as well. Um, um, I do not know much about uh, the other countries. Uh, Sam says, not sure. Uh, thank you, Pastipika. So sorry. Thank you, Pastipika. Sam says, not sure how reliable are these statistics. Sikkim, a state in Northeast India, has seen a significant rise in Christianity in the last 10 years, uh, to a point where the recent government felt the need to intervene and find out why is it so. Thank you, uh, Samuel, for sharing. Uh, so I think, yeah, like uh, Pastor Deepika said, and uh, Sam, uh, Samuel and Rosalind also said, you know, uh, Christianity is, you know, just uh, spreading. Uh, people are believing in Jesus Christ. But yeah, they don't go and change their, uh, you know, uh, their religion uh, uh, in the papers, so to say, the paperwork that they have that, you know, there are no more Hindus or uh, Muslims. Uh, they are Christians now because, uh, you know, that can hinder them from receiving the benefits being thrown out of their village or society and all of those things. But many people, many villages uh, are beginning to accept the Lord Jesus as a revival. Uh, if you look at America, yeah, there, there's a lot of, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, philosophies that are prevailing there. Uh, um, Hinduism that is growing, but at the same time, there is a revival that's happening. Uh, the churches there in, in the US are praying uh, and they are ministering and lives are being touched. Uh, so what I think, Siddiquinu, you have a burden. Uh, I, if I'm not wrong, you've already shared this before uh, as a question. So I think God's just basically steering up your heart. So you can just pray that, you know, in the nations like in European nations and America and North America and South America, you know, just uh, people would uh, would grow. There'll be a mighty revival. There'll be a mighty move of God. And, uh, you know, God will change things. And uh, don't look at statistics and be discouraged because God is working he's moving uh you know but you can if it's if it's just such a burden and concern you know maybe God is stirring up your heart to pray again all of us can also pray uh on this note we'll have to stop because we've already run out of time uh can I ask Siddhu can you can you lead us in prayer please in closing prayer 
Father, we come to the throne of grace. Lord, thank you for this day as you have given us, Lord. Lord, whatever the questions that were answered, Lord, thank you for all the faculty members and all the Lord, our colleagues who have joined in this in this setting, oh Lord, in this mentoring art. Lord, thank you for all the things we have learned for. Lord, all we thank you for all the questions which have been answered, Lord, all the doubts which have been cleared, Lord. We thank for the faculty, we thank for the mentoring art setting, and we thank for APC Bible College and all students who are present here, Lord. Lord, protect them, provide them, Lord, as we are going to start our day with the learning about your word, Lord. Lord, be with us. Give us your wisdom so that we can understand each and everything which is taught by your faculty, O Lord. Lord, protect us and provide us. Give us your wisdom and knowledge, Lord. So we thank you for this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Siddha Kenu. The Lord bless all of you and have a wonderful, uh, glorious uh, and blessed day and a week ahead. God bless. Thank you for joining the Mentoring Hour, everyone. Thank you.